Hello everyone, I'm Sharon Waxman. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of The Wrap and I'm coming to you from The Wrap's virtual Sundance studio, bringing you lots of amazing interviews with the talent who is showing at the Sundance Film Festival this year. I'm delighted to welcome the, pr the producers and directors of a fascinating documentary that's screening in competition, Aftershock. Please welcome Tanya Lewis-Lee and Paula Eisel to our studio. Hi, you guys. Hi, Sharon, thank you for having us. We're happy to be talking to you today. Well, listen, um, I think that the, the topic that you're talking about is going to be one that many films are dealing with, which is the issue of women, women's rights and uh, maternity. And that so, some, some of the films here in the festival are dealing with abortion. You guys are dealing with women who are seeking to become mothers and who have are facing serious institutional discrimination. Um, and I, I've heard about this, this issue when you're talking about mothers to be of color and what they experience in our medical system, uh, which uh, is very, very revealing. Let's just start by uh, asking the two of you how you came to take on this project, this subject. So um, I was drawn to the subject matter um, initially from my own experiences in the maternal health system. I'm a mom of four and I've had, um, I've had traumatic birthing experiences. So this was something that I was in tune with, um, but it wasn't until the end of 2017 when ProPublica um, released their investigative reporting about the maternal cri health crisis um, mm -hmm. in a series called Lost Mothers that I really understood that this was a national crisis and what I had experienced on an individual level um, was endemic to black women and, and really pro profoundly affecting um, communities of color. So um, I was really drawn to, to try to help uplift those stories and, and shed a light and was looking um, from the start for a partner grounded in the community to, to do this with. So um, I became a fellow at Concordia Studio pitched the project for development, um, and then started developing the project. And on one of the very first development shoots, um, I ran into Tanya. Uh, we literally ran into each other, and I was thrilled to meet her. And uh, we started talking, and here hmm. we are. Hmm. Yeah. And for me, way back in 2007, the US Department of Health and Human Services had asked me to be the spokesperson for their infant, morta infant mortality awareness raising campaign called A Healthy Baby Begins With You. Uh, that campaign allowed me to travel the country uh, to talk about infant health. At the time, I didn't know infant mortality was an issue in the United States. I didn't know that black babies died at three to four times the rate that white babies do. Um, and I was able to go and talk to all kinds of stakeholders and discovered that when you talk about an infant's health, you're really talking about a woman's health. Uh, and that women, especially black women, were not doing well in this country. Um, and then I talked to lots of groups of women, black women, who inevitably would tell me a story, someone would tell me a story about a sister, a friend, a cousin who had died from complications of childbirth. Um, I did a film called Crisis in the Crib back then about the infant mortality crisis, and I wanted to tell a story about maternal mortality and morbidity. And like Paula, I wanted a partner because I knew it was a, a big issue to try to wrap one's arms around. I wanted to tell it from the perspective of people who really were experiencing um, the crisis and um, was really happy to meet Paula Verte style documentary filmmaker so that we could really come together and put our uh, skills together to make this film. Well, so then how did you go about sort of identifying who were the women you were going to spend time with and, you know, you're, you're bringing the camera into really intimate moments of their lives, um, actual moment of childbirth and, um, you know, very personal conversations about their health or how they're feeling or how they're being treated. That is really the compelling narrative that's going on in, around all the statistics are the real people who you bring exactly. to this. So where did yeah. they come from? How did you meet them? Yeah, and exactly that. Um, from the very start, Tani and I, you know, wanted to tell this story through lived experiences. Um, that was the only 
way in our minds to tell the story, to make it a cinematic film. And um, the first person we met really was the catalyst for everyone else, um, Shawnee Benton Gibson, who's the, the heart of our film. Um, she's, she's the rock and she, she's the first person we met. And when we spoke to her, we just knew that this was someone we wanted to follow. Um, her daughter, Shivani Gibson, um, tragically and unjustly died uh, two and a half months before we met her. Um, and she put out a call to action and we, we saw that call and immediately connected with her, started filming. And then through her, we connected with Omari, who's Shamani's surviving partner. And then through Omari, we meet Bruce, because uh, Omari reaches out to Bruce, who loses Amber Rose Isaac. Um, and that that started a chain of, um, a chain reaction to just follow people with lived experiences. And even further, I love that you mentioned the woman who's birthing, because one of the ways in which we wanted to tell this story was that we want our characters to organically appear. And what I mean by that is we meet Shawnee and then we meet Amari. Amari introduces us to Bruce and then Bruce introduces us to an expert that we follow, a doctor named Dr. Neil Shaw. And while Neil actually serves as an expert in the film, we also go on a journey with him. And we follow him down to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where he's doing work. And we meet a, a woman named Felicia Ellis and her husband, Paul, and Felicia is pregnant. And what, what's so wonderful about Felicia is that she really allowed us in as she was trying to decide the best birthing option for her. And we followed her through that course, through her, through her birthing experience. And um, it was really special that she allowed us in. Yeah, that was beautiful. Were you guys there, You, the two of you? or We, we were not. not <laughs> a lot of people in the... <laughs> yeah. We had an amazing, we had an amazing photographer uh, who was there filming that mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and just coordinating her being on call and the sound. It was it was a fun experience to you uh, because she had to be on call uh, at the same time the midwives had to be on call to film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. we were sitting so, actually waiting for baby. Yeah, yeah. So and then also the sort of beautiful place where you know there's midwifery happening and th that was such a great counter narrative to sort of the negative statistics and the, I would say, lazy cesarean sections that, unnecessary cesarean sections that happen and, um, and, and the mortality rate that you're talking about. What, and maybe this is not something that you're prepared to talk about, but I mean, what do you think needs to happen in our society? And, and I get that it's a big question um, I think you could first say, well, we need to, to erase institutional racism. That'd be the first thing that we need to do so that black mothers are treated equally uh, as any other uh, race or ethnicity. But, but, we, but it does suggest what, sh what can we do because this has been going on for decades and decades. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I will say, you know, it, it does impact white women too, right? Because racism poisons the well for all of us. So while black women, we're talking about statistics comparing black women to white women. Black women die at three to four times the rate that white women do, but white women are not doing as well as their sisters in European nations. So I really appreciate really? that. Yeah, oh, for sure. Uh, and yeah. so I really appreciate you asking the question what we can do, because one of the things we want people to understand is that this is not a doom and gloom film. This is about solutions and, and things that we can do to, to have better birth outcomes. One of those things is to have integrated midwifery care in our healthcare system. All other industrial side, all other industrialized nations have mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to give women opportunities to make the choice about whether they wanna have a birth in a hospital, whether they wanna have a birth in a birthing center, or whether they want a birth at home. Midwives uh, have a real purpose and uh, in, in conjunction with doctors can really provide amazing care. And, and so, I mean, don't we, we have midwives in this country, we do. So but what's they're not, missing? They're not integrated into the system, like in, in, in the UK, for instance, like mm -hmm. they're supported. So you can birth in a hospital, a birthing center at home, um, and, and that's supported by the government. Um, so if something, if somebody needs a transfer to a hospital or needs or needs a higher level of care in an emergency, that's all coordinated here. You, you don't have that at all. There's no coordination between a physician and a midwife unless 
you do have a few midwives in some hospital systems, but oftentimes they're not allowed to actually catch a baby there. So it's much different here. And every state also has their own regulations. So um, there's not mm -hmm. one certification. So you can be certified in New York and literally not be certified in New Jersey. So all of it just creates a lot of confusion in the birth marketplace. Um, and that's why there's only 6% Six to nine percent um, of births are by midwives here, whereas in Europe it's way higher. It's everyone gets a midwife. Do you Every happen to, to know what the percentage is? And well, I'm sure all European countries have different percentages, but it's but yeah. like in the UK, when you become pregnant, you get you have a midwife not assigned to you, but that that's your first, that's the first person at the gate. Mm -hmm. It's not the mm -hmm. you start mm -hmm. that way, and then you coordinate if you need if you need better care. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and look, I mean, the other piece of this is that midwife culturally in the United States, mil midwives have been vilified. There, there has been a campaign launched against them uh, that has lasted a really long time. I mean, most for so many people, if you say a midwife, people say, "Oh my God, you don't want to go to a midwife." They're, you know, they're terrible. Um, people don't understand the role that midwives really can play in our healthcare system. It would help everybody. Would you say, and uh, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but it, it, is midwifery something that is more accepted in the black community as, be, because no, we talked to- I, 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 I don't know that it is. Again, I think this that okay. campaign um, that was launched against, against black midwives has been really effective in, across the board for everyone. Um, unfortunately- well, Hang on, go back, Tanya, and explain, because the, the film calls this out, that there was a time when midwifery was, is it, what is it, a hundred years ago or more than that? Yeah. yeah it, it, it was throughout, I mean, well, it was started from when enslaved people came to where we came or brought to to the U.S. Um, mm -hmm. Midwives came, midwives came with them, um, mm -hmm. and then throughout, really until women moved to hospitals in the in the twenties and thirties and forties, like that's how that's how that's people when, and, and that's when the campaigns really mm -hmm. start, right? Because now the system wants women to move into hospitals, and they're in competition with the midwives, and so you know they don't want people birthing at home anymore. They want everyone in, moving into hospitals, and that's how sort of that campaign really starts. And it's amazing how it has lasted. Yeah. And the the interesting. To, go, go ahead, Paul. Sorry, I just wanted to add that, like just to make sure there are so many solutions happening right now that there's a lot of momentum for this this movement that has that was started decades ago by black women um there's the mommy bus bills which are on capitol hill right now that's a bunch mm -hmm. of bills that would invest billions of dollars into black maternal health there's um our, our one of our main subjects bruce mcintyre is helping to build a, and fundraise for a birthing center in the bronx they just got yeah that was so yeah. cool Oh, cool. right. it's really so great. like there's so much to do here it's not hopeless and there's tangible things that we can do well part of it it sounds like it's a, it sounds to me like what you're suggesting is educating the black community as well as building infrastructure to integrate wow. with wifery I would, I would say it's really more top down i think it's really I about it i think it really is about getting the system to be more open-minded and and allow space for um mm -hmm. more midwifery care more doula care the midwifery uh industry uh and i and they are grappling with the fact that 87 percent of midwives are white again that's part of eradicating the black midwife so they yeah. have to identify their situation so that yeah. we have black midwives so it's it's complicated but it's not this is this is a problem we can fix there are problems in the world that we cannot fix but we can create a situation in the united states where there are better birthing outcomes for all women and it would benefit all women it's not just benefiting black women it's benefiting us all exactly. yeah yeah it, amazing culture it's the culture that's the issue here well yeah it also has to do with um the larger question of women owning agency over their own bodies and over their own choices and over their own weight, over their own treatment. Like it's all, it's all wrapped up in all of that. Being justice. It's the same conversation. And a lot of time birth and maternal health is left out of that. It's one. 
So. Right. But I think that you guys really put your finger on a really, you know, sensitive and kind of easily identifiable problem. Uh, so it's a really interesting narrative. It's very inspiring because it makes you want to sort of say to yourself, okay, what can I do to help Good. solve this? Absolutely. Um, everybody knows somebody who's either pregnant or wants to be. Um, or has had children and had a good or bad experience, Paul, like you did. So, or came from somebody who was pregnant. <laughs> or came from somebody who was, that's like pretty much everybody right there. So, thank you guys so much for this film, Tanya and Paula. Thank you for coming to our studio, and uh, I really look forward to seeing the conversation that uh, emanates from the film and uh, being helping be part of that with you as well. Thank you, and, and yeah. so do we. Thank you so much for the conversations. Yeah. Yeah.